Since the last time I made a video on post-processing, a lot of features have been changed, so in this tutorial we will go over all of the new and old stuff and learn how to set up a good post-process in UE 4.22 and above. If you end up finding this video useful, consider subscribing to stay up to date with new videos. With that being said, let's get into it. To be more precise, in this video we will see how we can transform this scene into this, this one into that, and this into that one. We will go through the entire process only for two of these, the Japanese shrine scene and the statues in the forest scene. With all that said, let's get into the Japan inspired scene. In contrast with the level that we will do later, this one is moody, dark and misty. And my post process was done with that in mind. To achieve that, I wanted to introduce as many shadows as I could while preserving details. I wish I could have gotten better contrast, but if I were to increase that, the shadows would become too dark, not something I'm a big fan of. Alright, let's see how well I can redo it while explaining my steps. First of all, what I always like to do with my post process is to enable infinite extent. This way it is going to affect the player everywhere in the level. So let's go into that, which is go down here and enable infinite extent. Now the second thing that we are going to do is to go to bloom and set the intensity to zero. And that is because Bloom is a very artificial effect, it adds light to your scene that is unnecessary and it is going to kill the realism. And this post process is the base that I always start with. Whenever I make a scene, this is the foundation that I always use because I never like to use Bloom and Infinite Extent is self-explanatory. Now let's go to Exposure and Enable Metering Mode and let's set this to Manual. Now with this we will have access to all these camera settings, those being Shutter Speed, ISO and Aperture. And if you don't know what these are, there's going to be a link down in the description of this video to Peter McKinnon's video about the basics of a camera. It is a very good video and I highly encourage you to go and watch it. Now let's set the shutter speed to 1, the ISO to 2500 and the aperture to 4.5. Now let's also set the maximum aperture to 4.5 just to make sure this works. And that should be it. Now the exposure is pretty good. Now let's go back to chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration is an effect that splits the RGB colors into three different directions in such manner that you will be able to see the colors individually at the edges of objects. Let's set the intensity to 1.3 and the start offset to 0.7. The start offset represents how far away from the middle of the screen this effect takes place. And because 1.3 is a pretty high value, I don't want this to be visible everywhere on the screen. The Dirt Mask is an effect that can be used to create a work camera look, more impressive HDR effect or camera imperfection. I'm going to skip this effect as it requires Bloom, something that I'm not using. The Lens Flares effect is kind of hard to explain, but you can see it on the screen. I'm also going to skip this one because there is no direct light source that can produce Lens Flares. Let's go to Image Effects. And let's enable vignette. The vignette effect can be used to add focus on an object and what it does is basically darkening the screen around the edges. I'm going to set this value to around 0.55. Grain is pretty self-explanatory and you can currently see it on the screen. It is going to add a grain that you can see through a camera while shooting in a dark environment. For grain jitter and grain intensity I'm going to set both to 0.2 so it isn't going to be that visible but it's still going to be there. Let's go to color grading and the first thing I always like to do is to go to saturation and set this to 1.2. Now the colors are going to be more vibrant, but I feel like the shadows shouldn't have any saturation, so let's set this to 0. And in order to compensate for that, let's go to highlights, set the saturation to 1.2 and at the same time let's go to highlights minimum and set this to minus 0.1. This way we are going to have more highlights into the scene. Alright, that's it for the highlights. And for the shadows, for the contrast of the shadows, I feel like there should be less contrast. They are kind of harsh right now. So let's set this to 0.9. And as well, I would like to give them a blue tint. So we can do that by going to gamma and set this to a blue color. Make sure you don't overdo it because otherwise it is not going to look great. Something around this value should be just fine. That's it for the color grading. Let's close this down and we're going to skip film and mobile tone mapper and we're going to go straight for the rendering features. Now what I'm looking for is ambient occlusion. I want this to be very harsh at the contact between two objects. I'm going to set this to 1. As well, I'm going to set the quality to 100. And pretty much everything else is useless for me because I don't have reflections or translucency into the scene. But what I want to do is to set the screen percentage to 200 or 400. For games, I don't recommend setting this to something higher than 100. That is because it is going to greatly impact the performance. 
So I highly recommend setting a slider that is going to go from 50 to 200 if you want the player to be able to experience the levels 200%. And there's that for that scene. Let's get on to the next one, that being the Roman statue scene. For this one, I wanted to get a calm sunset vibe with a mysterious feeling to it, hence the statues in the middle of the forest. Motive aside, let's jump straight to the post process and see why I did what I did. For this scene, I already got my post process foundation set up, so we can go directly to exposure, and this time we are going to use auto exposure histogram. For this type, the only thing that we will have to do is to go to minimum brightness and maximum brightness and set them to the same value. Value. this way we won't have variable exposures depending on where we look. Usually I go with 0.7 and 1, 1 being darker, so let's try with 0.7 first and see how that looks. And I think this is fine, so we are going to go with that. Now for chromatic aberration, I want this scene to be clean, so I'm going to go with 0.2. Now this alone is going to be a very subtle effect, but in combination with grain and depth of field, it is going to look a lot better. We're going to skip dirt mask, camera and lens flares, go directly to image effect. And I don't know what value would look good for the vignette, so let's just see what looks good. I think around here is good. Now for the green jitter and intensity, I'm going to go with 0.1 and 0.1. I don't think I want a lot of green in my scene. And that's it for the lens. Now for color grading, let's set the saturation to 1.2 on global. Let's also go to contrast and set this to 1.1 so we get a little bit better contrast. Now let's close global down and go to shadows. Then let's go to contrast and set this to a blue tint once again. Don't overdo it and it should be fine. And this should be it for color grading. We can close it down and let's go to rendering features. Now for the ambient occlusion, I don't know what value would look good. So we just have to try and see. And I think somewhere around here is going to look great, so it's not so obvious. Now let's also go to advanced and set the quality to 100, close it down, and once again, there is no translucency or reflections in my scene, so we don't have to use anything else. Let's go to screen percentage, and again, we can set this to 200, 400, or if it's for a game, you can have a slider. And this should be enough for this one. Now for this third scene, I'm only going to go over lenses and color grading because the rendering features is pretty easy. So let's see bloom, again set to zero. I do not like bloom at all. For the exposure, I went again with auto exposure and set the minimum and maximum to one. Now for the chromatic aberration, I went with something subtle, 0.3. You can still see it if you really try to, but it comes in combination with a green in the sky and the vignette effect and they all add together to make something nice. Dirt mask, camera and lens flares were skipped. And so for the image effects, these are the values. The vignette is almost close to default. I'm pretty sure this is by default 0 0.4. The grain jitter 0 and the grain intensity 0 0.12. Maybe you can go higher with this, but I think 0 0.12 suits fine. Now for the color grading, let's go to global and saturation. I pump this up to 1.2. And the contrast, because this is a dark scene, I went again with 1.1. Now for the shadows, I did the same thing as in the first scene, set the saturation to zero. That is mostly because this log and the anvil would look pretty bad with saturation on one. As you can see, everything is a lot more red. So by setting this to zero, it is going to look nicer. And then for the gamma, again, slightly to the blue side. So we are going to have a blue tint. You can mostly see this in the grass if I'm going to disable it you should be able to see a subtle change. One thing to pay attention in the rendering features though is the reflections. I use screen space reflections and I set the quality to 100 and the maximum roughness to 1. This way the reflections on this anvil and on the log are going to look much better than default. And that's it. The last thing that I want to talk about in this video are LUTs. LUT stands for color lookup table and this can be used as a way to color grade in UE4. If you're doing an environment, this is going to be a nice way to save time, but not for a game or a level. That is because although you're going to save time, this is going to come with a price that depending on what screen you're using, you're going to get varied results. But if you're making an environment that should look good, this is a great way to save some time. To create an LUT, you're going to have to have a special program such as Photoshop or something like it. That way you can apply effects such as exposure, curves, contrast and so on. What you'll have to do is to download the color neutral LUT, save it as a JPEG and import that into your program. In this video, I'm going to use Photoshop. Now, normally you would not know what effects to add. To fix that, we will have to import in Photoshop the image of our scene. And this is my Roman statue scene, which has no post process on. The first thing that I want to do is to set the exposure to a better value. So let's go to adjustments, click on exposure, and then drag the exposure to the left side. Something like this should look good. The next thing that I like to do is to go to curves and make this an S shape. So I'm going to set the whites to be higher and the blacks to be lower. And this is a nice way to create contrast. 
Now I would like to set the whites to pop up more, so let's do that by adding a levels adjustment. And let's drag the right handle to the left side just a tiny bit. If you're going to go too much with this to the left side, the whites are going to lose details. Now let's also drag the middle handle a bit to the left. If you feel like this is too much, you can always go to opacity and set this to a lower value. Okay, the last thing I want to do is to set a saturation to something higher. So let's go to hue and saturation and it should be good. Now let's take a look at how it looked in the beginning and how it looks now. To apply the same effect to the LUT, you'll have to drag this window out of here, click on the group and drag this into the LUT. Let's dock this back in here and now you can see the group in here. And by disabling it, you can see the difference. Now let's save this as a PNG and import this into UE4. Once you import this into UE4, it is crucial that you set the texture group to color lookup table. It is right here and now you can see the difference in the compression. Let's close that down and let's go into the post process. Then let's go to color grading, let's go to MISC, enable color grading LUT, select your image and then click on this arrow. And now you can see the difference. Now of course you can use this in combination with the built-in tools, which usually gives a great result. And as well if you don't like how intense the LUT is, you can always go to color grading LUT intensity and set this to a lower value. And that's all the time it takes to create a nice LUT. As you saw, post-processing is an important step in creating environments and levels. It is the element that helps bring out the details and get everything else together. The good part about it is that it is so easy to customize and get different moods very fast and you don't even have to worry about messing it up as you can always come back and adjust its values. If you ended up finding this video useful, consider subscribing to stay up to date with new videos and support me as well. And as always, thank you for watching. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons for supporting me this month and not only, and especially to these top tier supporters. Aaron Skinner, Badr Al Khartani, Darklich NY, Fracture Labs, Leonardo Pereira, Redwine Groove, and Xim369. For more resources regarding this video, make sure to visit its description. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.